Welcome, friends and neighbors, cats and kittens. I am Reyna, your friendly neighborhood witch of what the f and welcome to the This Little Piggy, Piggy Love Valentine's collaboration. I'm happy you're here, and I'm happy that I'm here, quite frankly. We are using This Little Piggy in Hustle. This is one of the newer piggies on the market. Hustle is opaque neon magenta, so it's kind of like groovy but pinker, which makes me happier. It's also blacklight responsive, which is just so rad if you are into things like blacklight, like me. Amsterdam, Kaput Mortem Violet. Kaput Mortem translates into deadhead or also possibly worthless remains. Either way, this has kind of a sordid history, the color, but, uh, that is for you to research and me just to hint at. Golden Peach. This is a juicy shade, as they like to say, and it's got a little bit of a color shift with a little bit of pink and a little bit of gold. And it's got quite a lot of mica in it. Not that you can really see this on this camera, but this is some beautiful stuff and it goes really well with a lot of things. Amsterdam Acrylic in Turquoise Green. This is an opaque paint. It is lovely for layering between piggies and also since it's opaque, it's really good for making peacock cells. Lakeside, this is one of my very favorite pigments. It is turquoise, but it's more on the blue side of things. It's ultra shimmery, tons of mica in here, and I think it goes basically with everything. It's really beautiful. Liquitex Basics Dioxazine Purple, one of the best colors ever to paint with, I think, is Diox Purple because it's dark and it provides a lot of contrast, but it's a beautiful shade of purple. Supernova. This is another newer color in the This Little Piggy line. It looks pink in the jar and it's a color shift between a light pink and a light blue. It looks pink over a white base, but it actually looks blue over a black base, which is so cool because if you have black and white underneath it and you spread this on top, you get pink and blue which is rad. Lagoon. This is one of the newest colors. This is a stunner. I am really, really into this color. I love it. It is a blue-green shift. The green tends to show up a little more over a white base and the blue really comes out over a black base. For a good example, check out my video, Black Sand Beach, where I use this to create these beautiful waves in the water. <laughs> you know, from the black sand beach. And this is literally the only color I'm using. Lagoon. Amazing, amazing stuff. Fairy floss is what they call cotton candy in Australia. I didn't know that and I know that now. So that's what this color is. And it's like a very beautiful pastel pink, but it's got a gold undertone to it. And it's got a lot of gold mica to it. So it's like warm pink, but would still go really well with any cool colors too. Matisse Southern Ocean Blue. This is just an absolutely beautiful deep blue turquoise color. It is transparent. Athena. This is a new color as well in the This Little Piggy line. It is in the Goddess series. It is in with Aphrodite and Venus and they're all kind of like a shade of pinkish rose. Athena is a true rose gold so it looks kind of pink in the jar and when you mix it up you get a lot more on the gold side and it is really beautiful when you are mixing anything that you want to have like that cooler tone rather than that bright yellow. This is amazing. This will really complement so many colors so beautifully. The Jumbo Ultimate Paint Spreader. This thing is cool. Obviously I forgot to clean mine after I filmed, but hey, you know, at least I've got it here for you to see. On the paint spreader, I have placed my cell activator, which is a mix of Golden's Carbon Black Heavy Body Acrylic and Australian Flow Troll. On top of the cell activator, I put Artist Loft Metallic White. Some people like to turn their nose up at this. I love this stuff. I think it works great and the heaviness of the metallic pigments, um, which is mica, in these paints make for some pretty cool cells in themselves and they look fabulous in peacock cells. So if you haven't tried Artist Loft Metallics for your tube paints, try them. I think they're a Michaels only brand, but wait for them to go on sale. It's good stuff. Thanks to Karen and Jody, I have switched pillow paints. This is now PPG Multi Pro Interior in Eggshell. Stuff is outstanding. If you have a Home Depot nearby, I highly recommend it. I've been using Color Place for quite a while and was just kind of like, Mmm, getting not so happy with it. Lots of flocculation. You know, when I'm painting, I say what the a lot, but I don't really want to say what the flock. And I was saying what the flock way more than I ever think I should. So if you're not real happy with Color Place, try this stuff. 
I didn't have quite enough pillow paint around the edges, so I just put some in my little cup uh, because I just got this gallon the same day I painted, so I didn't have time to put it in a jar like I usually do. Hence, I am using a fast food spoon to put it all the way around the edges so the paint will fly off at a fairly even rate. The worst thing is when your edges are dry and you try to spin and it just like doesn't move or it tries to roll over itself but it's too dry and it just gums up and it doesn't, ugh. It's a really good way to screw up what you're trying to do. So always make sure your edges are nice and lubricated. We're painting with quite a few colors today because nothing says romance to me like the aesthetic of like the 1950s in South Florida and Cuba. Pink and turquoise. It's, it's like my favorite thing. So here we go. Here, I mean, turquoise walls in my kitchen, pink earrings. You know, I made these. Yeah, they're resin. They're cool, huh? I had a shape in mind when I went to make this swipe. I intended from the very beginning to turn a swipe into a geode. So that is why I have just done the one across the middle and then back again and then just added around the edges. I was looking for some negative space to put the crystals on so that is what I was intending to do. There's somebody I'd like you to meet. It's Spinny, my paint spinner. I love this thing. It is an aluminum cake spinner and I just have some foil over the top. Uh, you know, I've never spun a cake in my life and I don't think I ever will so I'm not too worried about this thing food safe, Lord knows with all of the cake and uh, cake, all of the paint and the resin that is caked on here, I probably could never use it for its intended purpose anyway. But this thing is awesome. It's heavy, heavy duty. It really spins. If you are looking for this, I do have it linked below in the description box. I have got my spinner in a gigantic cardboard box. I think this box is probably about four feet by two feet. And it's uh, too big to even get on camera here, so I'm not gonna show you, but yeah. Gigantic two foot deep box. Yeah, it's a two feet, yeah, I was kind of reaching over. And I put that nice, lovely pink tablecloth in there because <laughs> it looked quite a mess without it, but ended up the pink thing kept sticking to the sides and rubbed all the paint off so i had to get fancy with the end result with some gold leafing and such but you know neither here nor there see i was just trying to make things look nice for you and it ended up causing more work for me so screw you i've got my first big initial swipe things are looking good but it's a little too much negative space for the amount of crystal work that i want to add so what's a girl do she adds another swipe or two. These are all the same colors that I used before in a slightly different order. And then I decided to use a slightly smaller paint spreader. Let me show you. Here we go, it's like the big guy's little brother. And then I use this one too. And like I said, I forgot to clean them, so I'm going to have to soak these in water, maybe a little bit of paint thinner to get it all off before I use them next time. But hey, you know, at least you get to see them. Size comparison. There you go. Good times. I am using Fluid Art Company mixing sticks. These are plastic and they are reusable. I didn't know this, but you can use them for resin because once the resin is cured, it peels right off. It actually peels off easier than paint, which surprised the heck out of me, but uh, in case you're on the fence and you're a resin worker, these are pretty awesome. They're awesome for paint too. They're just awesome. Buy yourself. Buy yourself. Buy yourself some. Treat yourself. Something like that. I keep having to move because the sun is shifting. Hmm, that's okay. It's catching my six different shades of hair. I don't even know what color my hair is right now. It's kind of like brown and then like blue to teal to um sad seaweed. This is kind of the color of seaweed, isn't it? <laughs> uh. And it's me, so of course I tend to overdo things a little bit and I added too much paint and didn't then have enough negative space. So what's a girl to do? She just scrapes a little off the edge, just a little, after spinning it, you know, 10,000 times. Scrape a little off the edge. Take a little of the edge off, if you will. All in all, generally a good thing. It's not really what I envisioned, but 
is fluid art ever what we envision? Not really, that's the fun of it. That is teaching one the ability to let go of the outcome and, you know, just be a little bit lighter about things. Not that I would know from experience about not being light about things. <laughs> I've been a goofball my entire life. That's why I call myself the witch of what the f because you just like never know what the f I'm up to. <laughs> Good lord, I tried alcohol inks for the first time last week. That was fun. Um, getting back into polymer clay for the first time since I was like eight. That's fun. You just never know. You just never know. What the, what the flock? What the flock? What the flock? What the flock? Right, on to the fun part. I mean, the other fun part, the geode making. I hope you're excited because I am excited to show this to you if you haven't seen this yet. Geode art, it's prevalent in the resin art community and I have become a little bit obsessed with resin. So this is something that I have, I've made a few of these now, but this is the first one I've filmed the whole process for and I'm pretty excited about it. It's good, but go big or go home, so. And I'm already at home, so. <laughs> That doesn't leave me with a lot of options. I had to let the painting dry for a couple of days. Some people say you need to wait three weeks before resining, but I have found that is really, it's not the case. Now it is dry in winter Wisconsin, you know, it's like 20% humidity. Anyway, the painting was dry. It felt fine. I decided it was time to resin. Also, <laughs> deadlines, deadlines will do that. Use your best judgment. If you live in a really humid place, you're probably gonna wanna wait longer. I mixed up art resin. I'm just showing you one of the bottles here um, because they look basically identical. This is just the resin side and the other one says hard and has a white cap, but art resin is amazing. It's got UV protection in it. They say it takes a lot more time for this to turn yellow than, you know, your cheap resins do. It does take longer to cure. So that was the thing that stood out to me when I first started using it because I've been using some of the cheaper stuff and I was like, it's been 72 hours, why isn't it cured? Well, that was in a mold. If it's just on a surface, it's done in 24 hours and you can start doing things again with it, you know, adding more layers, decorating it, that sort of thing. I mean, you wouldn't set anything on it until 72 hours, but that's neither here nor there. I mixed up four ounces and then I added to it some bling because to put it under the crystals, I wanted just that extra shimmer, that extra sparkle and that extra interest. And what I added is Wind Modern Art Lux powder in Pixie Wing. So I'm gonna get this kind of close. Ah, there we go. There it focuses. I don't think you're supposed to call it glitter. <laughs> it's ultra, ultra fine powder. And this, it's not showing up on camera, the precise colors of it, but this has a beautiful purple and blue shift to it in the light. It is a color shifting powder. There we go. You can kind of see a little bit of the purple blue there and it is just stunningly beautiful. So I mixed a bunch into my resin and then laid the resin out on the negative space on the white patches. I am using acrylic gems and I am filling in the spaces with that. I strongly prefer this uh, particular kind I get on Amazon. It's linked below if you want some because it has a large variety of sizes in there from the big ones all the way to like very, very small ones. And I really like the small ones. It really helps you build a 3D kind of real looking geode. However, if you're just getting started out and you don't want to spend twice as much, you can get crystal dazzlers at Hobby Lobby. I lay out my crystals before I ever put the resin down so I really know what I'm dealing with and how much material I need. So I start with the big ones and then I work to like the medium large, the medium to the medium small to the small, to the ultra small and build it out. So I can see it in my head how it's gonna go, take them all off, lay the resin down and start rebuilding it 
from big to small. That is the way to do it. The resin acts as a glue, but you also drizzle just a tiny little bit of resin just over the top and around the sides. You don't want it to be visible. Resin's clear, obviously, but you don't want big globs of it destroying the angles of the gems. Once I have my crystals in place and I've drizzled the resin on, then I add spectra glitter. This is a clear glitter and it just adds some extra sparkle and shimmer. It gives it just a tiny bit more realistic look. Spectra. 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 Okay, so you know what it's like bonkers maddening, being very technologically proficient yet forgetting to put your phone on do not disturb when you're filming and giving a call and your camera just stopping and you not knowing. So we missed about a full 30 minutes of footage. I'll tell you what I did. I took the remainder of the resin that had the beautiful pixie wing in it, the blue purple shift and then I added a whole heaping spoon of Win Modern Art Luxe Powder in Flame. This is like a rose gold, look at that, holographic rose gold. It's so pretty. And, you know, it's absolutely at home in a piece made for Valentine's, so I had to use it. I mean, how could you not use something that, like this? I mixed it up together and then added it in places that I thought needed a little bit of pick-me-up right away. So that big spot of Diox purple turned black didn't look real good. So what happened? It got totally covered in glitter. There's also a few lines that I added in. You can see them throughout the rest of the video. It is kind of that beautiful deep pink shimmer and it looks a little 3D. And it gives the whole thing a little bit more texture. So I'm sorry that I can't show it to you because duh, I made just such a dumb error from being, you know, dang good at technology. It's just, you know, it's the little things that trip you up, right? The little things. It's not the big things. It's like the stupid little things. What the flock, what the flock, what the flock, what the flock. Once that was done, I let it dry for guests. 24 hours. Time to add in some lines. So adding in the lines is really what takes this and turns it into the optical illusion of a geode. Because if you look at a geode, I should, you know, go grab one, but I honestly don't know where one is right now. My house is a little run over with art supplies. So your guess is as good as mine. You'll see a lot of lines, the different formations of crystal, the different colors, you know, whatever form of magnesium oxide was in the soil that particular day that a dinosaur threw up, you know, I don't know. But that's probably what a geode is made out of anyway, right? Corporalite. I don't ever want to see a corporalite geode. If there is one though, please send me a photo because now I really want to see it now that I said it. It's shit like this that comes out of my mouth that I just so severely regret later on. Corporalite geodes. Please don't show me. Please show me. Paint pens! Paint pens are your best friend when making geodes. There are a lot of different ways to use it. Some people mix up different resins and put them in squeeze bottles or like piping bags for frosting, but I prefer just getting down and dirty with oil-based paint pens. The first one I'm using is Deco Color in rose gold and this is beautiful. It's five bucks. You can buy it at basically any craft store, Michael's, Joanne, Hobby Lobby. These are awesome. The tip is a nice, I hope you can see it there in front of my strangely colored hair. It's a nice marker tip, very easy to use. You can make wider lines, you can make narrower lines, but these are the way to go. If you are going to do anything with metallics on resin, go for the deco color, they are the best. At least for metallics, Posca are really sweet for the not metallics. I also, at the end, use a little bit of this. This is the Krylon 18 karat gold leafing pen. It's fine. Uh, it's got a chisel point, which I'm not as crazy about because I end up having to redo the lines at least three times to get them to look nice and solid. The color is good. Once you get it flowing, it flows pretty well. So these are 10 bucks. So take your pick. Really great for 10 bucks or like super awesome, magnificent great for five. <laughs>
In places, I used both of these together over the same patch of resin, and it looked a little harsh, so I used some isopropyl alcohol on a cotton swab just to soften it up a little bit. These paint pens dry really quickly, so I let them dry for all of 10 minutes before I put on my flood coat of resin, and that was just another couple of ounces of art resin, totally clear. I didn't add anything to it, which is like, you know, so strange for me. <laughs> I didn't need any more glitter where there didn't need to be glitter in the first place because the piggies speak for themselves. The beautiful mica shimmer in them really comes alive under resin. And if you're afraid of resin, don't be. You might mess up your first couple of times, but take the pressure off and, and do something fun and don't aim for absolute perfection. You'll get there. I hated resin at first and now it's like my favorite thing. It's just kind of funny how things like that happen. Thanks for sticking around and watching all of today's collaboration videos. Tomorrow's agenda and then next week's schedule, they are both listed down below in my description box. I've also got links there for discount codes to win modern art where you can get this beautiful stuff and links to some of the other supplies that I use on Amazon and also a link to Fluid Art Co where you can buy this little piggy art resin, fluid art mass, these rad mixing sticks, molds, and all kinds of other great stuff. I'm gonna leave you with some close-ups of this beautiful Shelly Art Swipe Geode, hoping that you've learned something, that you've maybe got some new ideas, that you are feeling emboldened and ready to try something new, and that you know what materials that you need. Do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, come find me on Instagram. I'm so glad that I joined the Shelly Art fam in the first place. This has truly changed my life for the better and I am so grateful to see what happens down the road. Thanks for being here. six o'clock news idiots go outside to film in the cold idiots go outside to film in the cold it's 30 degrees <laughs> but the wind show makes it feel about 12 here in wisconsin beautiful bright february 1st we are sadists and masochists those of us who live here